Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to Wild Hearts. So last we left off on some resource questions, and uh, like I suspected, uh, we actually cannot get them until we go to the third map. So there is nothing for us to do in pursuit of our uh, low rank bow except for uh, push forward, basically. And uh, to which end, I will show you that uh, for the lava back, I have crafted a water bow, since I can't get to the poison bow that I want. And uh, we are actually going to change... I actually... Uh, I wish we... Our next project... Well, let's just start there. Our next project, before we go fight the lava back, is to fight the grit dog. Now we're just kind of hoping that there will be one on the map here. Because we need to start working our way towards the uh, other bow that we want to make here. Uh, the beginnings of which, because it's going to be relevant uh, throughout, basically. And we also want to see if any of our... Me. Can't even look at that one because it's too close to the target. But it would be just lovely. I, I, apparently, I just can't even look at it. I forget to put this in morning. Oh, I'm pretty sure I put this on morning. This is a dark tunnel. Crit Dog is uh, going to be important for our other bow, and our other bow is going to be following the tree that we are ultimately going to be taking towards the end game bow. So now that we have our armor situation sorted out, I want to show you my first encounter with Grit Dog before we carry on, so that uh, later today I can pressure Bob into helping me with this bastard. Trying to get a shot on his tail, but... Yeah. And like most people, uh... I am pretty firm of the opinion that Crit Dog is not my favorite creature. Echo attracted his attention, but he's right near me. Oh no. Oh no. But please be unstunned. That'd be just just fucking lovely if I could be unstunned.
Definitely not my favorite critter. Great dog. That was me being greedy. It's pure greed right there. Sorry, I thought it was a lot to heal. My bad. I swear the walk on it is so weird sometimes. Okay, let's go tidy this up. We can go do lava back and then I can form this map later.
Yeah, I, I, I explicitly am going to need tails. And we got everything we needed. Uh, we got uh, the uh, elemental lantern. We got the uh, launcher unlocked. Okay. So we are all good there. On the subject of that grind. And that makes us uh, at liberty now to head back here. We can get one more. We need to get a few more Sukumos to actually unlock uh, more of these. And the other thing that I did want to do before we head out is over here. We did want to get this unlock. And we did want this unlock. What else really matters here? Take the firework uh, upgrade for now. And move us down towards the uh, healing water upgrade. We'll have to visit uh, Fume Beak again as soon as we unlock the stake. Which we're getting close to. But if we get to here, we can get the wildlife cage going. Yeah, we're moving along. I'm gonna take this too because we're going to want to uh, get this. So we have that going on. Mercury is still in operation. And you can see now that we have that upgrade, we have all of these question marks that are on the map. That will be documents and relics and assorted other goodies. But for now, in order to truly open up this map for off-camera farming, we have one more thing that we must do. This lava back deserves stuff. I feel no guilt.
Okay, so the trick here uh, is that I need to be fully on fire. This is, I think, the only fusion that I know the definite specifics of the unlock. I forget if I still have the Nostrum water on my set. That would be unfortunate, actually. I'd have to. I. If we don't get it here, I'll have to check that. No, I, I replaced that. Okay. Yeah, I replaced it, so I just have to make the choice to be on fire, I think, is what it comes down to. Because we really need this fusion car curry from him. Oh, if you excuse me for a second while I throw. I don't like myself very easily. Okay, and again, because I know I did that quite fast. Uh, the uh, healing mist thing that I just put out, the 
proper name of which eludes me for the time being. I think I missed my opportunity. I sure did. I honestly believe being above that would make it okay. Okay, we gotta make a bit of a detour here. Love back's almost done. Okay, we should be good to finish this out.
It's just so crushing the mess. Well, well. Again we meet. It seems you have a knack for cheating death. As a hunter, I see you have grown. The fire in your eyes burns stronger now. Fitting that our paths cross here, in the sacred land of the ancient hunters. Traces of their aspirations remain. Both within you and without. Once it was so that hunters were born here, raised here, and would die on this soil. But in time, they expanded their horizons, crossing the sea to Asma. But that migration was only possible with the power of Karakuri. With the knowledge and technology possessed only by those hunters of old, sadly, all that was, no longer is. The haven the hunters built for themselves in Asma was washed away by the rain of a thousand days. A great flood that covered all the land. What few hunters survived dispersed northward or westward, taking with them what little knowledge remained of Karakuri. All that was left behind crystallized to become the seed. So you see, all that was left behind now exists within you. You need only hunt, and trust that in so doing, the seed will soon grow. Uh, over there, look! Oy! Sorry to keep you! Your successful defeat of the kimono means we can proceed with the... Oh, what's wrong? Really? I haven't seen anyone. This place is far too dangerous for most. Anyway, never mind. Let's get on with the plan. You remember we discussed how you're unable to conjure and command Karakuri anywhere you like? Well, the reason for that is intimately tied to a form of energy known as Celestial Thread. Think about when you create Karakuri out of nothing. Tendril-like phenomena appear, don't they? That is Celestial Thread. It's the motive force behind all Karakuri. If there isn't enough of it, Karakuri can't operate. The larger and more complex the Karakuri, the more Celestial Thread is required to power it. You've probably noticed already as you've been walking around that these ruins appear to be some kind of giant Karakuri. We can only imagine that at one time it was functioning as intended until, for some reason, the Celestial Thread here dried up and it ground to a halt. For some reason... Due to stagnation of key in the ground, perhaps? 
Precisely. Key and celestial thread are essentially the same thing. The key here is not flowing. Fix that, and these ruins should come alive. Legend tells that this place is actually an elaborate machine used to divert celestial thread to another location. And I'm sure by now you can deduce what location that is. Our very own Minato. Which means that if we're successful here, all the Karakuri that have been gathering dust in Minato until now should suddenly spring to life! I was starting to think I'd never see them working again. It's been so long. What we're trying to achieve here is crucial to the survival of the town. The influence of the kimono is growing all the time, and we have no way to defend ourselves. Sooner or later, we'll be forced to abandon Minato. So after many long discussions among the elders, they decided we should work towards restoring the town's karakuri to give us the means to fight back. Which is why your task here is to use your skills to wake up this ancient place. Oh, Minato's karakuri working again. I just can't imagine it. It's exciting, isn't it? I have memories from my early childhood when they were still working. Celestial thread weaving its way. Oh, this I have to study. So we did it. Yes, we did. A great success. You played your part perfectly. Thank you so much. Now, let us hurry back to Minato and see the transformation. Yes, I can't wait to see what's happening around town. Let's go. Okay. So, to round off the episode, we will head back to Minato and, uh, complete this step. And then yours truly has some farming of Natsuk.gil to do, including tracking down some of those question marks for more Sukumos. I hope you guys don't mind that I'll, I'm getting a lot of these secrets and relics and Sukumos and stuff off camera. I'm sure you've by now seen quite enough of me running around frantically looking for more. Amazing, amazing, amazing! I never dreamed this could happen! Everything is working again! It's like life has been restored to the whole town. Every Karakuri is working again! Oh, then the Karakuri at the forge will be... This I have to see! <laughs> well, Natsuma is happy. To be honest, there are dozens of things I'd like to experiment with, too. And if you wouldn't mind, I'll be needing your help with many of them. Wow. Isn't this something? I expect you're dying to look around town. I know I am. Just think of the dust flying off all those old karakuri as they spring back to life. The bathhouse near the town gates, for example. The hot waters will be flowing again. Ah, they don't need an attendant now. It couldn't have gone better. And it's all thanks to you. Oh, it all went exactly to plan. The town's karakuri are buzzing again. I simply couldn't have done it without you, you know. Yo. Oh. You want to know what's still to do? Here's the list. All right then. Bye for now. Okay, so we're going to do a quick sweep of the town, pick up our optional quests and things. As you can see, we have a few of them uh, wandering around now. That one. Oh yeah? What is the town? 
alive again. Dear Hunter, have you heard the unfortunate news? Of the corpse found along the Blossom Trail. They have identified the poor soul at last. A fine young farming fellow. Such a waste. It was a customer of mine who happened upon the tragedy. On his way to Minato via the Harvest Canyon. And now he comes under suspicion. There is no doubt in my mind that this is the work of Kemono. Yet not all appear to agree. Because it's hogwash! Dansuke wasn't killed by any Kemono! Welcome back. Is my account really so hard to believe? It makes no sense. Dansuke had some of the fastest legs in town. There's no way he would have let a kimono get him. Besides, I happen to know he got into a fight with someone from your store the day before he disappeared. If you ask me, you lot did him in, and then tried to make it look like the work of a kimono. No, but Kogyoku isn't one of us. She and her Crimson Treasury patrons can't be trusted. You see what dreadful ill will befalls me? Could you possibly investigate the matter? A hunter's eye is what we need to see if this really was the work of Kimono or not. Or so say the skeptical few. Waste of time. I'm sure these snakes will have covered their tracks. But go on. Be my guest. I leave it in your ever capable hands. Okay. I think this one is, uh. Why we were petting but turtles. You went to the spirit aisle? The one who made the wheel turn? It made Jisan so happy. I want to say thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Jisan said it used to turn back in the day. That's before I was born. And he said it was a really big thing when it stopped turning. He tells me lots and lots of stories, you know? Oh, like the one about a huge tortoise on the spirit aisle with coral on his back. Jason used to be a merchant, and he told me he saw a piece of its shell for sale once. Do you think there really is a kimono like that on the island? Could you go and have a look for me? Why do I only have one out of three coral shells? I've been petting turtles left and right, getting ready for that. Oh well. There'll be more turtle petting while I'm farming the map. Oh, Minato Kogyuk-san has been very good to me since I ended up here in Minato. I'll always be in her debt. That all we have to grab? I think it is. It does keep listening to the townsfolk, doesn't it? Eh. Yeah. san has been very good to me. No, you don't have anything else. Let's just run through really fast because I don't want to accidentally advance this. I don't know what specific townsperson I need to speak to. Maybe not to my. Just lock in the next step. Uh, it is not to my. Okay. Sumimasen. Uh, I just can't stop watching. It's so fascinating. This karakuri can maintain a higher temperature in the hearth. That would mean I could forge various materials I couldn't forge before. So I'll be much more used to you now. To everyone in Minato, in fact. The times I've tried and failed to get all the things in this forge working again. 
Most of this equipment has been gathering dust. But now, it's had a new lease on life. Minato could thrive again. Like in the old days. And it's all come about thanks to you. I honestly don't know how to express my gratitude. Nothing I could say would be enough. Just... Arigato. Thank you so, so much. Now that the Karakuri are all working again, I'm eager to gather the materials I need to make these little ones of mine really shine. And it's got me thinking. There's this old hunter's camp up on the highlands to the north of the Blossom Trail. I've passed it a few times when I've been out looking for materials, but since no one's been using it, it's fallen into disrepair. Yeah, blast up. That's gonna lock Harkasumi way shoot, out. I'm sure it would be a useful base to head out hunting from. Which would be good for both of us. What do you say? Do you want to fix up the old camp together? <laughs> Why are all the Karakuri suddenly moving? Okay, well. I guess we're not quite done yet, because... I actually need access to this map for the farming that I want to do, so... We will come and do this really fast. It won't take but a moment. All right, let's get this new camp set up. We should aim for the highlands to the north, just beyond the Sakura Cave. Okay. So we need to head up that way, huh? This king tusk is in the way of something I didn't want to show you guys since, uh, it seems I have to conduct a little bit of business here, uh, before I will be allowed to, uh, just free farm for a little while and go track down these Tsukumos and stuff to upgrade. Um, I can show you that there is a relic, uh, right over yonder here. So at this point, it is going to force me to put down a hunting tower. Fortunately, I have the resources to do it. Wants me to 
go this way. There's anything over here to care about. There's a talisman. The camp's coming together nicely, I think. Time for a break, maybe? <sighs> we can have a chat while we catch our breath. You came to Minato from the west, didn't you? Along the mountain path. That means you must have walked right around the foot of the sacred mountain. Isn't it a very difficult path? Hardly anyone uses it, and I'm sure no one maintains it. It was a sacred place for the hunters of old. Much like the Spirit Isle, I think. But I've never heard of any settlements or tracks that way. I suppose the weather's too inhospitable. Sometimes you see clouds of kocho fluttering around the mountainsides, though. It is pretty, but creepy in a way, too. They're called eternity ringlets, that particular type of kocho. I suppose because they gather by the injured and the dead. In the old days, some people even thought that humans and kemono turned into kocho when they died. Anyway, ready to get back to work? <laughs> Let's get this camp finished off. <sighs> Let's leave it there for today, shall we? very frequent lately.
Really? Hmm. Interesting. It was like a moving mountain. Honestly, I've never seen such a huge and terrifying kimono. It reminds me of something I read in the records from centuries ago. A giant kimono ripped across the land. The castle, the town, the people, all were swallowed in rock. If this is the same creature, it would explain the frequent tremors we've been experiencing recently. Even the strange behavior we observed in the other kimono could be traced back to this giant. All my life I've lived in Minato, and I had no idea such a kimono lived so close. Well, kimono only stray outside of their territory in exceptional circumstances, and they rarely show themselves to us. Remember, all kimono, no matter how big or small, are sustained by the same energy, celestial thread. And since Celestial Thread is ubiquitous, they have no need to wander in search of it. But then, why has this kimono... Oh, could it be because there's no thread left in its territory, perhaps? Yes, that's my hypothesis, too. I believe our giant is hungry, due to some great change in the flow of thread in its environment. Now, we recently flooded our town with Celestial Thread by restoring the Karakuri on the Spirit Isle. So, unfortunately, we've made Minato look rather appetizing. But that's terrible. That means this Kimono is going to expand its territory this way and swallow us up. I wish I could fault your logic, and I'm afraid we can't reverse what we've done. I had a nagging feeling that something might go wrong, but... Not this wrong. If only I had investigated the possible outcomes more thoroughly. No one's to blame. None of us could have anticipated this. We didn't know anything. Uh, wait. Didn't you say you'd encounter this bear once before? Heading from the sacred mountain towards Minato? Oh. So that means it comes from a habitat to the north. And you're saying it was on the move even before our work at the ruins? Hmm. But no, we don't have time to be pondering the cause. We must decide how to act, and quickly. Are you serious? I realize your hunting skills are exceptional, but no single person could dispatch a beast of that size! Even if everyone in town pulled together, the best we could hope to do is give it a nasty surprise to begin with before... No, come on, Suzuna. You owe it to Minato to fix this. Think now. Hmm. Going along the Harugasumi Way, its enormous bulk will mean it has to descend into the river. If we can position Karakuri along the bluff, we might be able to defeat it before it hits the town. I think that's the only workable strategy at this point. I'll talk to the elders about preparing the necessary karakuri. What I need you to do is buy us some time. Without a chance to prepare, I'm afraid we're doomed. Hmm. I wonder if I could... Sorry, I need to go and test something. Meet me later at the forge. It's going to take all we've got to overcome this threat. The town needs your help now more than ever. Believe me, I'm doing everything I can think of. Point. Okay, so now the progression point is on Natsume, which we will have to forge elsewhere, but that should mean that we can uh, farm freely in our newer maps. So, uh, let me actually just go down to my house. And yeah, for convenience's sake, so that we do not end up progressing the story beyond where we want to, we'll just pop our own field forge right here that we can use uh, when we need to. So that we don't actually push anything forward that we don't want to. On which note, lords and ladies, as I load up my drying rack again, we are going to call it here so I can chase down some of these uh, Sukumos and stuff that are on the Spirit Isle and some relics and what have you. So I will be working diligently on that.
and then we will resume uh, with the plan to bring down Earthbreaker. For now, thank you so very much for joining me, and I will catch you all in the next episode.